shouldn't be able should be um, determined by the user. It's like you make it play slower or faster. And uh, we also forgot to put on here that it displays on the LCD the pitch and uh, just uh, like what mode you're recording or playing. That kind of thing. You can play the recording in reverse or forward. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is our system block diagram. Software flow diagram right here shows. And we have our startup mode initializing. We wait for input from the user, so whether they push play or record. If they push, you know, if they push play, um, then we start reading from the VRAM where the um, signals or where the uh, audio data is actually stored, and then we write to the rack, write to the DAC at the same time until it's done. Recording, similar thing, except we're reading from the ADC, and then we're outputting into the uh, VRAM. And um, we just have a global for the frequency, um, so they can set that with the buttons. Uh, we use our timer counter to connect to the interrupt to create a delay for our sample rate to determine you know, how fast we're taking samples in, and as well as our output frequency. Um, we use GPIOs for the buttons, the LCD, and switches. Um, we add an OPB uh, VRAM controller to um, get a nice little 32 kilobit, uh, kilobyte memory block to store our sound signal in. And we had to use SBI um, to connect to the PMOD 81 and the DA2. So a uh, basic design of our software was to take in the 12 bits through the ADC and then convert that to an 8-bit signal. Um, we used a VLOG conversion, which just compresses uh, the 16-bit into 8 bits, and this allowed us to store more um, samples in the VRAM and allow for more samples in total. And then um, the then it just reads that 8 bit signal, converts it back to 12, and outputs it through the DAC. And um, our hardware design, we just use, like you said, use the SPIs to, to communicate with ADC and DAC. Um, GPIO for the LCDs and then the buttons and switches and the LPD VRAM for memory storage. And so for integration and testing, um, our first step was uh, memory. We had to find a way to um, store our, our audio signal. Um, we were going to um, communicate with external RAM, but that became a pretty uh, Part issue, and we just ran out of time being able to interface with that. So we decided to use the maximum amount of VRAM that we could get out of the Spartan 3E, which happened to be, um, I mean, along with our program and everything else, we were able to get a 32 kilobit um, space to store our sound signal in. Um, and so for the digital sample conversion, we had to find a good way to convert between 12 bits and 8 bits. We found that uh, ULAW is a common conversion scheme used in, um, in, in the United States for tele telecommunications and everything else. Um, and it actually cleaned up our signal a lot when we, when we used that um, because it eliminated some of the high-end high end noise um, that was on the, uh, came in through the microphone. Um, we kind of had to find a balance between the best audio quality, the longest recording time, and the least amount of memory usage as possible. So we tuned it to find a good sample rate that would provide good audio quality while being able to hold about five seconds of recording. Um, once we got all our software and everything all set up, we had to find noise reduction. We had to figure out how to reduce the noise on the input and the output. Um, the little, our, um, our Nexus 2 board is really noisy. The power that comes in because it's coming in through USB is really noisy. And so what we had to end up doing we tried using filters and everything else, but really where our noise is coming in is through our power to our microphone. So we just um, ran our microphone off of an external battery, and that cleaned up the noise uh, considerably. Um, yeah? What was your sampling uh, Um We did it, let's see, about, I think, uh, 8,000 hertz. Yeah, just around there. I think it was 8,000, yeah. Maybe a little, I think it was a little less than that. Yeah. Um, first, we were testing with um, just direct input from the iPod because there's a cleaner source of noise than the micro, uh, less noise than the microphone. So, let's see. 
so we can record. So you just press this button and it records for a certain amount of time. It's just recording on the input there. And then when you want to output it. And so that's what was playing on there. And um, then you can, uh, if you want, you can increase the, or let's see, you could decrease the pitch. Or this playback speed. And then you can, um, let's see, you can also decrease this so it plays a lot faster. And it's just variable by however much you want to do it. Um, and then this is, I don't know, this is just something we threw in, but you can play it in reverse. It doesn't really sound that cool, but. This is, flips it and plays it in reverse. Um, and so then, what's that? Oh, yeah, so microphone. So this is a variable frequency microphone. Actually, records for a moment. And then, oh, you know what? Our power was not enabled. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is a variable frequency microphone test. Testing. And then um, it's kind of cool with like to do the pitch and stuff. You can kind of just do something like. <laughs> and then so you hear that. And then in, a, in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like the frequency, you can kind of, um, you can kind of. <laughs> make yourself sound like a chipmunk if you want. <laughs> or, yeah, really slow too. But, yeah. Yep. That's, that's, that's it. it. <laughs>